Let's talk about PDF validation. I think we can very clearly all agree that PDF was never, ever, ever designed with validation in mind. Um, we know that practically, and I can certainly state that with a whole lot of authority, it was never part of the equation. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. And you know, when you think back again, 20 years ago, nobody was worried about that sort of thing. You, know, you look at other file formats that existed at the time, Microsoft Word wasn't even compatible between its Mac and its Windows version at the time. Text files, HTML, which today still can't be properly validated 20 years later. As I said, we have the same problem, but it wasn't a consideration back then. Nobody worried about such things. So, but let's look at just how bad a problem we've created over the last 20 years with respect to the problems of validating a PDF and just sort of put it all into context as to why validating PDF is not necessarily a trivial exercise. So some of this, of course, many of you are probably familiar with and I'll apologize, but at least it puts it all in context. There are four parts of a PDF file, according to 32,000, the header, the body, the cross-reference table, and the trailer, each one of them is totally different. So for each one of these parts, you would need to validate it completely differently, using a different syntax, a different grammar, different rules. If we wanted to validate all of the different text syntaxes within PDF, we'd have to write nine or 10 or more, depending how you actually break these down, different parsers, different validators, different grammars, we have content streams, postscript functions, Unicode tables, the rich text model for annotations, JavaScript, ASN1, which is a format for digital signature data, XMP and XFA, <coughs> and FDF and XFDF. So each one of these would need to be parsed and validated independently of anything else we did within the data structures in the file format of PDF. We also have binary formats as well. All the different function types. We have seven different shading models. Now these are just binary formats native to PDF. These are ones that we created as part of the PDF file format. These are not ones we adopted from elsewhere. And the same thing with the previous slide. I mean, those, that was a combination. Some of those we made up like CMAPs into Unicode tables and some of those we adopted like JavaScript and ASN1. Here, these are purely PDF-centric binary formats. But not to be undone, we got a whole lot of binary formats that we have adopted in the PDF. Three different font formats, two different 3D formats, two different binary formats for digital signatures, and ICC profiles. Each one of these, a different format requiring a different parser, a different validation grammar, a different model for validation. You know, and, and exactly what is and can be validated in each one of these cases. What is valid in each one of these cases because now you need to look at the rules for each one of these standards and what they mean. Not to mention the possibility of all of the different audio and video formats that can be embedded in a PDF. Each one separate, distinct, unique, separate that have to be looked at and validated, assumably, accordingly. Now, not only do we have all these different types of data, but now we can also encode or filter the data in 10 different ways. We have ASCII filters, we have FLAT and ZD LZW filters, we have image specific filters, we have encryption, you know, and different encryption algorithms that all need to be processed and validated in and of themselves on top of whatever the data is that they themselves are compressing, encoding, or encrypting. And each one of those things needs to be, needs to be processed separately. Hopefully, we're starting to get the sense that just how complex this whole process really is. But, let's see if there's something we can do. So, so far I've given you what I think is the bad news. But I think there's some good news too. Okay, I think there are some things within PDF where we can do validation and we can do it in a very well structured manner. And that is, let's focus on the body. Let's focus on where the majority of 
the objects of PDF Live. Okay? <coughs> there are nine different types of objects, simple types, we have our collections, and of course we have stream data. And as you know, they're organized into a nice pretty tree, starting at the root or catalog and going down throughout what would be considered the object tree of the file. Okay? Okay. Each one of these objects is well defined in 32,000. It says what keys can and cannot be present. It says what the values of each one of these keys are, what type each one of the values of each of those keys are, when they were introduced, when they're optional, when they're required. Guess what? That's a grammar. That basically is all of the information that we would need to build a grammar, to build a machine readable description of that one part of the PDF file. And <clears throat> can we do it? Yes. And in fact, <clears throat> Francois is going to talk a little bit more about two different examples of PDF grammars uh, that have been submitted to the ISO for consideration. I'll leave that part to him. But the point is, yes, it can be done. In addition, one of the other key aspects, at least with respect to rendering the PDF file, are the content streams. And a content stream is not that far away from the body. So that a lot of the same grammar elements that we use to describe the objects in the body of a PDF file, which is a little bit of extra syntax, can also be used to describe the data in the content stream. Because they're the same basic object types. And so we can use that same grammar model to also do validation on content streams. And so now we have the ability to describe two of the most important, most core elements of the PDF syntax using a machine processable grammar. But, and just to go back and reiterate, that's just the tip of the iceberg. Even if we do those two things, and, and we should do those two things, and uh, Francois and I are actually chairing the group, the ad hoc committee within ISO, to actually make this a reality. Once it's done, we've only just begun. We have to look at all of those other things that I addressed in the earlier slides. Validating binary formats, validating text formats, validating the other parts of the PDF, before and if we could even have a complete PDF validator that says with 100% accuracy, yes, this PDF is valid, and exactly what that would mean. So we're working towards it. We think there's really good goals here in mind. And with that, let me turn it over to Francois and let him talk a little bit about um, some of the details and also about how validation can be used beyond just the ways we normally think about it. So all yours. Thank you, Leonard, for the, the introduction. And as you might see already with uh, the title of my slide, I'm heading into a little, a slightly different uh, direction. I will be talking about the subject of PDF runtime validation and beyond. So runtime validation, what exactly is that? Uh, one question to, to the audience. Um, how many are here uh, that have PDF readers, not writers? any kind, validator, uh, viewer, uh, text extractor, or so, uh, things like that. Oh, quite some, that's great, cool. You're doing already some kind and to some degree um, runtime validation. Runtime validation to me means um, that you're using um, the contents of a PDF document, that means the dictionaries, all values that are in dictionaries, arrays, um, and things like that. And you're doing, uh, and you're expecting particular content to um, exist and have a specific shape um, inside the document to do the, the processing. Problem: We have many of them. Really, really uh, there's a lot. The, the uh, PDF specification is about 1,000 pages long, yeah, and almost in every page there's a description for a dictionary. Um, that's quite um, a lot of thing to do. <coughs> And it is pretty hard 
to do to check for every condition that can go wrong and for everything that you're expecting to be in some, some way inside a PDF document. So if we have a look at how we um, personally we, we uh, do the processing um, in our viewer, we load the native data structures. For me, we um, have a lex with a parser, we get native, the low-level data structures out of it. That means we have the name objects, we have uh, the arrays, we have dictionaries, and things, have stuff like that. And then we look into these um, native low-level data structures to extract the, the, the um, the content, the information that we know to do the further processing, to do actually displaying what is inside the document. And to do this, we have to do some kind of pre-validation. That means we do at runtime, in the moment what we need it, uh, check if these entries are in the shape that we are expecting them um, for us to work. This is typically um, hand-coded. I think that most of us will um, do pretty much the same. We're all hand-coding that stuff. And you can imagine it's really, or no, you cannot imagine, you know it's really much that you have to implement. So Leonard already talked a little bit about a kind of grammar. Let's um, call such a thing, and I get back to, to this kind of slide uh, a little bit later, um, a formal representation. What is a formal representation? Today, we have the grammar in form um, of a PDF specif specification. The only option what you can do is you have to read the specification and you typically re read it um, again as um, reading in what one time um, is typically not enough. <coughs> and of course, there are many people um, reading the specification. And we know that there are many kinds of interpretation of how the uh, a PDF document should look like or how the concepts in uh, the PDF specification are um, meant. There's really a lot of misunderstanding why we have bad PDF documents out there. For us, it's a major problem uh, because we are re uh, facing bad documents on a regular basis. So what could we do? If we formalize uh, such a thing into something machine readable, as uh, Leonard already said, we have two sources. We have the PDF specification as the master source for everything. Here is everything described. In addition, if we would have a formal representation, that means kind of a rule set, we could use that for a reference. I'm I'm a developer. I um, pretty much like the sentence look, "use the source look." Um, documentation is only for well, for the others, <laughs> and I love to, 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 to look in, uh, into code. And if I would have a formal representation that, could I, that I could use in addition in my software to do anything with it, would be great. And does this cha change anything? I'm totally, um, the, I have totally the opinion that it does, it really does. For example, if you get back to um, the slide I had before, we have pre-validation. That means I will check if the dictionaries are in the, on, and the areas are in the shape as I would expect it to be. Um, need to be pre-validated. Instead of writing that logic all myself, I could use this formal representation which is machine uh, processable and um, do the pre-validation um, pre based on the rules that are defined in there. That means I will have to be to implement some kind of loading logic for the rule set, and after that I just run it. I just run it for each dictionary that I'm facing. I'm not writing it again for every dictionary that I um, have to, to work with. The only problem, if you do it like that, is printing um, something um, like this and using it um, as kind of an inter interpreter, it can be very slow. What you can do further, and this is my um, thing that I love the most, the beyond part, you could do um, and use a code generator. This is actually what we are going to do in our, in our implementation. Uh, we, ha we have a formal representation which defines the shape on how this um, a PDF document should, lo should look like with all the rules in it. That means if this value has been set, it, um, the other value must be uh, uh, this one, and this entry is required, and things like that. 
We're generating our base, uh, the, the whole code for our, di our dictionaries have a perfect pre-validation logic and we can fine-tune it uh, to uh, run it to, to let specific things pass through as we have to support uh, a lot of the, the fallback logic that the reader has, for example. <coughs> but we could, um, can ex uh, stand it only at specific points and we do not have to do everything from hand. And with that in mind, you could do even co um, um, a completely different things. You could use the, uh, the formal representation to do any kind of transformation, for example, like to generate a click-through documentation um, of every PDF dictionary. That means you have a pretty low-level um, documentation that you could um, easily click through, perhaps with uh, references to the, to the specification itself. or to have something that I think the PDF specification itself, the ESO 32000, is not very good in, is showing up what are the exact technical differences in the PDF document itself between um, specific versions. If I want, to, I want to know which dictionary entries are new or deprecated, or whatever, between the versions 1.5 and 1.7, if I compare these sets, it would be possible to extract that information and use it further. Okay, and as Le Leonard already said, we have, um, no, Adobe has turned over a grammar called the DVA, the Digital uh, Dictionary Validation Agent, um, to the ISO for, for um, some kind of specification. Um, there's already a document existing um, about how that syntax actually look, looks like, the possibilities, etc. We have turned another um, language over to the ISO um, 2. And as Leonard already said, we uh, are working in an ad hoc committee that Leonard and I uh, are the chairs of to find something that the ISO can use in some, in some way. It's quite open what will happen. We will see um, over the next months what we um, can do and will do. Uh, but the most important thing is, if you're interested, please, Get in, in touch with Leonard and me. We are more than happy to uh, discuss with you what, is, uh, what our perspective is and um, in which direction everything will go or might go or even if you have other ideas of what should be, uh, be respected with, when defining such a language, please get in touch with us. <laughs> in addition, we have um, a small tooling around the, uh, the language that I, we have been using in our company to formally represent the, um, what can be inside a PDF. Um, and it is based on Eclipse and it can actually uh, be used now to, do generation, uh, to generate logic. And we're using it to generate our loading logic of um, our viewer, including the validation logic as, as a whole, st whole thing. It will be available on GitHub. Here you have your URL. If you're, uh, it will be so available soon after the, after the PDF Technic conference as we learned the last steps for preparation. And um, you're more than welcome to get this thing, try it out, and we are more than happy to see um, any kind of feedback. So now we plan to get fast through everything um, to have a little open Question answer answer round. Excellent. Thank you very much. <laughs> so I have a couple of questions to start us off here, and then uh, but, but any of you in the audience should, should feel free to uh, jump in with your own questions. Um, so one thing I'm I'm curious about. Uh, we have, of course, the awareness that, that invalid PDF files, one way or another, are a problem from a user experience point of view. Um, and now that's you know, one interesting question is, is that how much of that problem has to do with the PDF syntax issues that you guys have been talking about versus say, for example, bad font programs? And, um, and what, what sort of relationship might there be between the kinds of efforts you're talking about and, and the sorts of problems users experience? Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, well, I was just gonna say, I, I'd actually, I, I think part of the, the aspect of that question that's a little fuzzy understandably is sort of uh, problem, you know, invalid PDF that a user experiences. 
Um, and this sort of goes towards one of the things I said earlier this morning when we were talking about this after the keynote. You know, um, Adobe Reader, rightly or wrongly so, hides a lot of those mistakes from the user and just processes it and makes it work. And in most cases, users could be using really bad files and they would never know it. Um, you know, as I said, that's a goal of our product. For, you know, as I said, rightly or wrongly. Um, so when a user actually sees a problem in, um, you know, Adobe Reader, it's a real, it's a major problem. It's just something we're not able to overcome. And in those cases, I would say almost 100% of them are in embedded formats, a bad font, a bad profile, um, bad 3D data, something that's not the core PDF syntax, because those core syntax issues are the ones that we can work around. Um, so from our standpoint, you, you know, the issues that users encounter are not syntax, PDF syntax issues. Well, um, we have a little bit different view. <laughs> no, 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 that's, again, that's why we're here. <laughs> yeah. um, especially b because we don't know the magic uh, that Adobe Reader does. It does it great, I have to say, I have to say that. It's really cool what, what it uh, can do and decipher. And it's almost um, every binary garbage I can throw into the direction of Adobe Reader and will it make any kind of um, somehow lo um, looking PDF document or re uh, representation. We are facing on a regular basis um, many, many, many documents that have formal um, errors, a lot of formal errors, like things like um, black is one is one of my favorites, black ls1, um, while the capital I um, as interpreted as a uh, lowercase l, um, great thing. I, it took me quite a while to turn it to, to <laughs> get that uh, right. Um, and things like that, it's quite difficult um, um, to see if I generate already something that is um, possibly wrong because there is not too much option to um, get best, the best possible feedback about whether the formal thing I've written in the PDF document beside the embedded formats um, is already very correct. So I'm, ha I'm looking a bit into the direction of Duff because of his session right after the session. Um, it would be great to have a open source validator, don't you think? <laughs> oh, I most certainly agree. <laughs> uh, uh, does anybody have a question? I, I have another question. I'd be more delighted if somebody else jumped in. You talked about, about the validation and doing pre validation. Um, I actually wonder why and how you would use that. Because I can see down, like, I can see downsides to doing it, but I wonder why you have the pre-validation step and how you would address that. Um, we're doing the pre-validation step. Um, well, I said it is a pre-validation because it is um, only a small set. I, we, we, as we man manually handcrafting the logic, we must check if there are specific things inside the, um, the PDF document in a shape as we, were ex we are expecting it. If you're not doing that, our product will fail on a regular basis. Yeah? So um, I have to check if a dictionary is of a specific type or if a value is a dictionary. So these, these checks might seem simple, but you do, we're doing it. And anyone else that is writing a, uh, a reader, in, in kind of, uh, some kind of reader, is doing it automatically because um, otherwise you will have uh, the baddest errors that you can imagine. But isn't it, and this is perhaps what I, what I don't, or where I don't understand how you do things, but isn't it so that in most of those cases, yeah, you do a lot of that checking, and I remember some of that very fondly. <laughs> you do a lot of that checking, but at the, at the same time, when you write code to read a PDF file, you're not only going to check, you're probably also going to come up with various creative ways of actually keep going if you find something that isn't what you expect. And isn't a, a validation step where you simply run things through a validator going to stand in the way of that on flight fixing of things? It would, it would. But what we're doing, and I think what would be the best for um, almost all, all readers, um, we're doing the basic checking that everything is 100% correct. If we're facing an error, we, we're looking at around what other readers are doing. 
if we are accepting exactly this, this error, we have to do it too, because we're forced to. Um, and then we can concentrate only on this spe special case on uh, where something is wrong. So what we do is we generate even high-level objects. That means we have a cat catalog class um, that has a lot of uh, methods to interact with, uh, with the catalog. The validation will be done behind the scenes. Um, and fallback logic uh, can be put in place at the spe specific locations where we need it and not globally, or um, no, um, not using fallback lo logic at, um, at any way. Is that, that's, that's the key thing that we are doing. We're concentrating only on the fallback, not on the uh, general validation stuff, as we're generating that. Right. The, other, the other thing which, which you mentioned, David, which is somewhat, we, you could argue whether it's related or not, but I, I would say it's, it's at least somewhat it's out of scope in a sense when we talk about validation, is fixing. You know, um, the, whether it's you know, a full pass validator or it's runtime validation, the fixing is a totally different aspect. And because in reality, you don't necessarily want to fix it in that you expect the file to be rewritten as much as you just need to get past the problem. Um, it, it, if you're even trying to get past the problem, I mean, you could just be validating to say yay or nay, it's good, it's bad, or here's all the problems, and you're not looking to fix it. Trying to actually fix problems, and fix some of these problems are, are a whole nother ball of wax, as you well know from your experience. And, and I don't think at the moment any of us are trying to go down that side of the path. You know, most of this is just, you know, yay or nay, green or red, does it pass? Yeah, and it, it, it goes back to, I think, what will be in the discussion later on, whether validation is more of a, of a use in a, as you're developing a product and making sure that you're doing the right thing, or whether it's something you want to use while you're opening files that come in from the wild. Right, is it an end user issue or a developer issue? Exactly, I think that's a, a, an excellent discussion for, for Duff later on. Yeah. Okay. Anybody else like another question? Or should I take a look? You mentioned two different uh, grammars here, EDA and your grammar, there's a difference. And how much from the PDF spec both grammars are, are both are grammars, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay, so how much goes and what is the difference in here? <laughs> <laughs> so the uh, well, as far as I know and I believe both of us would say this. So both grammars are complete for 32,000-1. Yeah. Okay, for, the, for, the diction, for all of the dictionary array, all of the body objects for 32,000 part one. Um, neither of us, since it's not done yet, have completed work on part two. Okay, but they are complete for part one. Um, so that's the first thing. The other, the second thing is that the, while both grammars cover the body objects, um, only Diva at this point, correct me if I'm wrong, does content streams. Yeah, right. right, so our, our grammar right now also addresses content stream validation as well. So it incorporates a grammar for that. Um, the, the differences, and actually maybe I'll let you talk a little bit. Why don't you go ahead, because you're more familiar with, you've looked at both of them at least more than I have, I guess. Uh, it's a little bit more about the notation. We have pretty much different notations of how we express things. Um, we're going in pretty much the same direction with, from, from different angles. Um, DVA started from 100% uh, for validation, aren't you? That's correct. From for validation. Yes. Yeah. So we were, yes. Well, ours has always been about validation, yes. So, and we, our perspective was always to do the code generation. That means we have, I don't know if um, DVA has a notation for the default val values, default values in dictionaries. Not at all? It does. It does? It, it does. does. Okay. Yes. So we're doing um, almost a, a pretty much the same thing, but with different syntaxes. Yeah, the, if you look, if you were to look at, I mean, they all have very similar concepts. So in both cases, you know, you've got the name of the dictionary, the keys that can be in the dictionary, um, for each key, what type of value, like it takes an array or an array in a stream, um, is it required, is it not required, you know, required or optional, what version of PDF was it introduced in, all the things you basically, if you open up 32,000 and you look at one of the tables, it's that 
it's predominantly that table described in a textual language. And each of us took different approaches. Ours is a little more verbose um, textually. The, the Levigo grammar is um, much tighter um, in that regard, much less verbose. But it, it's literally all of the same data, just, just described differently. Um, you know, again, pros and cons for why we each went in the directions we went. Um, and that's part of why you know, we're co-chairing this group in 32,000 is really to understand what the right thing for the ISO to produce is. Is, you know, is it one of the grammars? Is it both of the grammars? Is it something new that combines the two, the best of both worlds? Uh, we don't know yet in the 32,000 committee. And I think that's one of the things we're going to look for input for from you know, the committee itself as well as you, know, you assembled and others to tell us what it is you're looking for. What, what do you want in a grammar? Is it runtime validation? Is it post validation? Is it contents? What are the key things that are most important to you in validation and grammar description so that we can deliver? Yeah. What do you want? I second that completely. Uh, please get involved. Um, please get in touch with us, discuss with us, either now or um, at a, a smoker's break with me <laughs> later <laughs> or somewhere else with Lena. Uh, we are happy to discuss um, any idea. One other question for you. Should validating a file format be part of unit testing? It's <laughs> a good question. Um, so I, I'm going to answer that in two different. I'm going to. I'll give you my thoughts, and then I think okay. definitely, which may be different. I don't know. Um, the certainly, if you're writing a tool that is generating a file format, that being able to validating whether or not that file format is correct, the results of that generation are correct, is clearly a key part of unit testing. Because if you're not generating something valid, then that should fail the test. Um, one of the things that people tend to do, uh, it's a shame Bruno's not in the room because I know this is one of Bruno's um, least favorite things that he sees on his mailing list frequently, are people who actually try to compare the results of PDFs in their unit tests. Because they produce it the first time and they say, oh, okay, this is the standard and they put that in their unit test suite and then they generate again and they expect to do a binary difference of the two files and they expect them to be 100% identical because that's how unit testing works. And, and all of you who have created PDFs know that will almost never happen. In fact, if it does happen, there's probably something wrong, um, not the other way around. So, um, you have to be very careful about saying you're going to validate. So validation is a general concept, yes, without, in my opinion, without question, but not, we have to be very careful about exactly what that means in the unit testing world. I, um, I think pretty much the same. Um, it should be part of any kind of software that you're doing that is generating document documents, even if you're only using a library and you're, you're generating, uh, generating corporate documents using that library, do not trust it. Um, do post validation when you have generated those documents in, in form of unit tests because there may be errors at any position and it's better to be sure um, than to have to pay the cost afterwards. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Okay. We were uh, out of time for the session. Uh, so, uh, Francois Leonard, thank you both very much indeed. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.